Have you checked your email this morning, Mulder? No, why? Because I received something unsettling. Casting from the deep depths of cyberspace, this is Darn IT Podcast, Cybersecurity Made Simple, and I'm your host, Darnie G, Chief Technical Architect of Darn IT Group. Episode 19, Clickless Threat Actors and What to Do After You Click on a Phishing Attack. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I really want to discuss today about the evolution of phishing attacks. We all know what a phishing attack is and how it may look like. But what we do forget sometimes is the fact that these threat actors are continuously changing their methods. They're changing their attack vectors across the board. Cyber criminals are changing the attack surface hour by hour, day by day, month by month, year by year. So understanding that these cybersecurity training is a great first step in avoiding some of these phishing attacks. But what happens when all of that gets flushed down the toilet? What happens when you are no longer able to stop these phishing attacks from happening, seeing as this is still, even today, in 2020, the number one resource that criminals use to try to compromise any organization's computers is by email. So don't be surprised if this increases over the many months and years to come. Clickless attacks is very concerning for us because it really removes the human element altogether, which is inevitably the point. The attack vectors are so dynamic and ever so increasing that if I'm sure if anyone gets an email from their long lost prince from Saudi Arabia, I can say this with almost certainty that a lot of people seeing that message will know it's fake. But what happens is, or if you receive an email from somebody and even by just opening it, not clicking on anything, not replying, allows a threat actor to gain access to your device computer, or any piece of technology by that matter. A recent example was is from a iPhone zero day vulnerability. This vulnerability attacks the email application on an Apple device. This includes the Apple iPhone and the iPad. This vulnerability, uh, if an uh, attacker emails the app or the email inbox, it will trigger a heap overflow in the native mail application, exposing the operating system. Now this vulnerability was found by researchers at ZecOps, and they have claimed that vulnerabilities existed since iOS 6. This was back in September of 2012. The issue here is that these security researchers at ZecOps have claimed and have demonstrated that these vulnerabilities can be exploited. What they also have cautioned is that these hacks could be exploded, exploited before any patch release on Apple's side. Now, keep in mind that Apple has also gone on record in terms of these vulnerabilities and stated that the Apple users are not vulnerable for these attacks, but ZecOps will release 
uh, in the wild evidence soon. Zek Ops have also claimed that the exploits specifically target persons of interest. So persons of interest would be business executives, VIPs, celebrities, journalists, politicians, etc., so forth. So this vulnerability could be used by threat actors to these persons of interest who are using the Apple iPhone native mail app. Now, this really changed the, changes the game because you have to understand that just by receiving an email and clicking on it could allow these criminals access to your entire mail application and it could go as far as beyond getting the access, the data that's on the device itself. Now, seeing as a majority of people have a mobile device, this could be used against them. Now, right now, the evidence only points towards uh, iPhones at the moment and iPads. But understanding that these sort of vulnerabilities are coming to light. There are a large majority of threats out there that are not in the wild, but could potentially be very promising in the arsenal of cyber criminals if they are exposed across different platforms. And this is, is very this is very concerning because it completely eliminates the human element to this, but it also triggers a new wave of a phishing campaign attacks against the world. Now you say, Darling, well that's nice, that's great, but what happens if we do click on these links? Well, in particular, the iPhone vulnerability or the Apple vulnerability that I just mentioned about, uh, typically speaking, they can gain access to either your passwords, your contact lists. Um, they may have to launch another um, vulnerability to gain access to your device. But really, the point of this is to highlight the fact that these clickless threats will continue to evolve and change in the coming weeks, months, and years. So it's good to make note of that today. Generally speaking, when these emails do get received, they don't normally have anything in the subject line or they may have something in the subject line and body. It really depends on how the attacker wants to deploy this. But generally speaking, it's not right now a notification from a mail courier or a company. But lo and behold, it will probably change in the coming months. Now, after you've used or have clicked on a phishing email, now, let me make this clear. We're only human. I can tell you from experience, there's lots of people that I've come across that has clicked on these links um, in phishing attacks and didn't know better. Because quite honestly, cyber criminals are getting very sophisticated and pretty darn well in their ability to spoof certain email accounts and if you don't check it completely through a fine tooth comb then you inevitably will click on the wrong link so i'll talk quickly about the five steps to take after clicking on a phishing link so this is the point where you're like uh oh oh crap i'm pretty sure this was a phishing attack but i still clicked on it it's okay it happens here are some of the things that we can do to minimize the risk of exposure to yourself. Now, upon realizing that you did click on the link, if it was immediate or even after the fact, uh, I would always suggest completely disconnecting the device from the internet. So no Wi-Fi, no physical network connection, no cellular data connection, complete, completely remove and isolate your computer or mobile device from any sort of data source altogether. Number two, and you should have done this already, but I want to mention this. Back up your files. If it's a mobile device, typically speaking, most of these vendors do have built-in functionalities to back up your device. For any computer system or laptop system, uh, there's different methods, cloud-based solutions, USB thumb drive, external drive. There's different ways of backing up your data. I would highly suggest you do that. But as a side note, you should be having some sort of 
backup procedures done in any case to avoid any loss of data in the event of, of data corruption, ransomware, or any form of data loss altogether. Number three, scan system for your malware. Make sure that this particular email didn't inject arbitrary code into your computer system. Assuring that you have the latest cybersecurity protection on your devices, you should immediately run a scan and possibly run a secondary scan using a other third party a malware tool to give sort of a second opinion on your device. This includes computers and mobile devices alike. Change your credentials. Typically speaking, if a phishing attack is successful, sometimes you could have had your account breached, which means that the attackers may have your password for your email account. Now, as spoken in earlier podcasts, I understand that most people do have or do use their passwords for different websites. So for example, school, banking, um, various other websites would probably use the same password. I would highly advise you changing the credentials on your mail and on all these applications that you have set the same password as it is on your mail application. Another and last sort of measure you must take anyways this day and age of data leaks is to set up some sort of fraud alert on your credit or identity fraud alerts on yourself. Now understand that um, there have been thousands of thousands of other businesses leaking a sensitive information, which means you on the internet and on the dark web. So they may have this information about you and may eventually collect the last pieces of the puzzle for them to steal your identity, for example. So having some sort of fraud monitoring service on yourself or on your business is key because that stops um, cyber criminals or criminals in their tracks if they have the database set to take your data or to collect your, your identity, etc. So they look at different ways of trying to accumulate that data through different data sets they may have collected in the dark web or on the internet and bought and sold uh, and through that. But understanding that that information can and will be released in some way. So having that extra sensor on yourself will avoid you from having to deal with some real big headaches if someone's trying to open up a mortgage under your name or try to put yourself under in terms of credit. So you must make sure that this is in place now because stopping a fraud in the beginning is a less of a headache than stopping a fraud after it has happened for a certain amount of time. So understanding these things are very key to protect yourself. But in terms of the clickless threat actors, it's always great to be abreast of these threats. So thank you for listening to Darn IT Podcast with Darnley G. If you like our show and would like to know some more, like or subscribe or please leave a review. Remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computing, everyone. Bye.